Hi everybody. So today I am going to show you this cool fade-in scroll effect that I made. So basically it looks like this. I just have some dummy text here. And as you scroll down, the new sections fade in. I really like this effect. I saw it on Apple's website and I wanted to figure out how they did it. So this is the video of me explaining about how I did it. So the first thing we're going to learn about is this get bounding rectangle uh, method. And uh, that's kind of the heart of this whole thing is this, this enables us to be able to do the math that's required to know when elements come in and out of the viewport. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how that works. So what I have here is uh, we're going to track, we're going to get the rectangle for this heading. So in my HTML, all I've done, if I scroll to the top, all I've done is put an ID of first heading on this, this first heading right here. And what we're doing in the JavaScript is we're just going to grab it with a get element by ID, and then we're going to console.log out the result of this get bounding client rectangle uh, function. And it looks like this. So if I refresh the page, you can see it gives us this thing called a DOM rectangle and has some pretty useful properties. It's basically these properties are where the rectangle sits within the viewport. So right now, you'll see that we'll pay attention to this top property. It says 217. So right now it's saying the top of this element is 217 pixels from the top of the viewport. And we can confirm that by inspecting the element. So you see, notice the top of this element is not the top of the letters. It's slightly above it, right? It's the top of that blue box. So what I can do is kind of pull down from the top here and roughly 217, you see that's where the top of that blue box was. So we can tell, we know that, that the uh, rectangle is accurate. So I'm gonna go there. And this changes when we scroll the page and move it around. So right now I'm at the top of the page and it's 217 from the top, but if I were to scroll down, say about all the way to the bottom, why not? And then I refresh the page. Now, we remember the, the browser has stayed at the bottom of the page. Now it's negative 4,275 pixels from the top because it's way up top here. So it's the number is negative because it's not in the viewport anymore. So we can use that information to figure out if something is inside the viewport or not. So this is what uh, the uh, script looks like here. So basically it's just three or two functions and then a uh, event listener for on scroll. So the first uh, one is kind of the meat of the application. It's the uh, is visible. So basically it's a function that tells you whether or not something is in the viewport or not. And basically we get that, it gets past an element and then we take that element and get that rectangle that we were talking about. And then in this if statement, we check that top property. We subtract the window inner height. So the window inner height is the height from the top to the bottom of the viewport. So essentially, if you imagine, say the uh, this this heading was you know negative a thousand or not negative a thousand, but say it's a thousand pixels from the top down here as it lives down here but our inner height is only 900. So we take the uh, 1000 from the top, subtract it by 900, we would get 100, which is less than, or not less than, the negative 200 uh, we've set here. This is kind of, the reason we set, we can set it to zero. I'll show you what happens when we set it to zero. I refresh the page, nothing happens, but then the second it comes into frame, it's just a little bit, I like the negative 200 because it kind of scrolls down a little bit more and then it pops in. So that's why I set it to negative 200, but we can leave it at zero, just to make it a little less confusing. So, so we got two or we have it set at zero there. So now the second that this pops into the frame, it's going to load. Oh wait, I didn't even save it. There we go. Now that should, that'll have the different effect. Yeah. See how the second I'm second, it gets in a frame, it pops in. I'll reload it one more time. The second, you see, it's already pop faded in. You haven't even gone to the text. So that's why I did negative 200. So it actually goes 
it only it fades in when the viewport gets to about here so we'll change that back negative 200 and so that's the math right there so it's say it's a thousand pixels from the bottom subtract the 900 it's still 100 which is not less than negative 200 so it still returns false it is not in the viewport whereas when i scroll down a little bit now this top element this top uh, number has gone up and we subtract the still the height the 900 and we'll get past if it's less than negative 200 then it will return true so then this scan document uh, function is what gets called every time a scroll event is fired and what it does is it selects all the elements on the page with the class of hidden so in the index here I've just given all these sections a class of hidden and all that is is setting the opacity to zero so it's just making them see through basically that's all it's doing uh, and then so it finds all of those and then for each of the items it finds it applies this function which is if is visible it executes this is visible uh, uh, function on the section that it's working on and then all it does is if is visible is true it uh, removes the hidden class and all it, that does is take this away and then that changes the opacity to one and then this transition uh, CSS takes effect and that's how you get that nice fade in if I were to take this out it would just pop in the frame you'll see you watch it pop in oh wait no not at all what happened Hmm. Okay, so I think I got it working this now. So yeah, if I take away this transition, I save, I reload the page, you'll see it. It just pops in to the screen. So the transition is what makes that nice, uh, that nice fade effect. So that's all it's doing is it's removing that hidden class. Now the only problem with this uh, method is that it's firing a scan document uh, function every time a scroll uh, event is fired and that happens a lot actually every time you scroll so in order to demonstrate that I created just this simple counter it just has a number of scans variables set to one and then every time we run this scan document I'm gonna console log the number of scans and then I'm just gonna increase it by one just so you see how many times uh, this scan document function is running because it fires every time the scroll fires so we'll just inspect element look at the console All right now it's there second I'm just gonna hit the wheel a little bit here. boom I just literally clicked one click on my mouse wheel and it fired 16 scroll events I'll do one more now we're at 31 I haven't even gotten past the first paragraph and I'm already at 106 it's firing it for every single uh, every single element in this uh, section list I believe actually that's why but it's a lot of scroll events so the way we can handle that because it works on this it's fine because there's not that much going on on this page it can handle all those events but if we had a lot more things going on it could potentially really slow down our application if uh, we're firing all those scroll events so quickly once someone's scrolling so the, one of the uh, solutions is to add a throttle function so all this function does is it takes a function and a wait time creates a time and then it returns a function that uh, takes in the time plus the wait time or the current time plus the wait time minus the current time and if it's less than zero it fires a function and resets the date so we could do, uh, we'll just insert this in here. We'll go throttle and then we'll throttle the scan document that you're throttle the amount of times we're going to fire that within a given period of time. I'll do 5,000 milliseconds, which, uh, will be five seconds, which is kind of a lot, but it you know, just for demonstration purposes. So go back here. Uh, missed the uh, missed the parentheses. All right. So you see, it'll be firing a lot slower this time. So we just fired one scroll event. Five more seconds. Now we just fired a second one. So instead of firing 16 at a time, I'm only five. I only fired two. Now I fired three. 
And so as we scroll, now five seconds is too much because you see it's kind of, I can do this and it, it uh, I can outrun the, uh, the fade ends. But it's to demonstrate that, see, we've only fired five scroll events, even though now it'd probably be in the hundreds of scroll events if it was, uh, if I wasn't using that throttle function. Now, the problem with the throttle function is, is that you probably don't want to use your own. So what you can do is you can use a low dash, uh, throttle function. So all I did there was I have the low dash JavaScript library already imported on my HTML. That's why I can use it. So you can just find a good CDN with low dash. And then it just goes low dash and then throttle or dot throttle. So now it's using that library, which is they've, you know, they've, they've taken to, into account all the, uh, the things that can go wrong with the throttle because it's, it's a little more, it needs to be a little more complicated than just this simple thing. There's a lot of caveats to it. So it's better just to use one written by other people that's, that are smarter than you sometimes. So I'm going to change that to 500 milliseconds. So every half second it's going to be firing a, an event which is a little bit better, a little bit better. So I won't be able to outrun it as easily. So we got one, now that's firing, that's firing. So see, it's a lot, it's still going pretty quick, but it's still better than before when it would have already been up to like four or 500 probably at this point. So that's it. That's the, how I made this cool fade in effect uh, when you scroll down a page. Uh, thanks for watching.